And I would like to invite uh, Amanda for the last presentation of today. Yeah, sure. Can you all see my screen okay? Yeah. Perfect. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Amanda, senior product designer on the import team. Um, for today's UX showcase, I'd like to talk about the work that we are doing um, to learn more from our users about the expectations they have for import. Um, but first, a little bit of context. So users can import projects from various sources, and they can import groups, but only from GitLab. We do know that our top three sources for projects are um, GitLab export, which is importing a project from one GitLab instance to another, um, and then GitHub and Bitbucket are our top sources. Um, and for we just released the UI for the group import experience last month. So previously, you were only able to import using the API. So our goal is to build an experience that is easy to use and reliable that gives a positive impression when migrating data to GitLab. So we're currently wrapping up and synthesizing the information from our recent user research interviews. And our research objective, we wanted to understand the import space from a customer's perspective. So we were interested in learning what their processes were, what their pain points were, and what opportunities for improvement there are. And our hypothesis really is the current state creates friction for customers when onboarding, creating a negative impression of GitLab. So our research approach, we had 10 moderated interviews. Um, we recruited participants that have used the import feature within the past six months, have never used the import feature, um, existing and potential customers, as well as system admins and dev team leads. So we asked specific questions depending on which group our participants fell into. Um, for the group who experienced using importers, the key questions were asked around kind of their process of importing and what they were importing as well as from where. Um, for the group that had never experienced using the import feature, we wanted to find out if they've used any imports, importers in the past and how do they compare to GitLab. We also had them walk us through steps to import, commenting about their experience throughout. So for both, we wanted to know about any key features that were missing or any um, usability issues. So our initial findings, um, and again, we're still gathering those, but many folks use import features rarely, um, once to a few times a year. And then most people use the GitHub to import projects. Uh, most thought the process was easy. However, two participants had quite a bit of difficulty migrating their data. In fact, someone was frustrated after having to wait for releases in order to resolve their issue. Um, we're also missing a few importers or sources. Um, we had one user that had a, quite a lot of trouble importing using the API to migrate their data because we didn't offer the import, importer source that they needed. Um, and then some opportunities that came out of this research is the ability to directly import from self-hosted to .com without having to export. So currently, the process is if you're on uh, self-hosted, you have to export your projects and then re-import them into your .com environment. So it's a lengthy and cumbersome process. Um, another opportunity is the ability to easily set up mirroring projects in GitLab to an external source somewhere during the import flow. So um, from those interviews, we can start to identify areas within the UI to focus on. For instance, discoverability. Uh, many users associated importing a project with um, a new project creation, which is awesome. However, in order to get to the import feature, some of the participants directed me to click on the project drop down and then when they noticed that it wasn't that import wasn't there then they had me click on the plus icon which is in fact where where import is located so this is something that we want to explore and test 
And then some of our error messaging is way too vague, um, leaving the user to wonder what happened. So in some cases, they contact customer support to help resolve the issue. And you can imagine how time consuming and frustrating this could be. So I've been looking into Zendesk and pulling customer tips to better understand kind of real life situations um, and how they, were, how they were resolved through the customer support team. So we'll be investigating better ways to communicate failed imports and errors in the future. And another opportunity is <clears throat> uh, real-time data. So when importing projects, we currently show the various states of a single import. And there, I, I believe it's scheduling, scheduled, running, and done. Um, and this is useful to know when a single import is complete. However, it doesn't necessarily represent the entire import of many projects. So perhaps a progress area would help a user to estimate when their import job is complete. Like if you imagine that you're Delaney, the development team lead, and your job is to move 900 projects over from one system into GitLab, knowing the pro progress of a single import isn't as valuable as knowing the progress of the entire import job. So this is another area we kind of plan to, to do some exploration around. And so that's all I have for this UX showcase. Um, thank you, everyone. And please reach out to me if you have any questions. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you for such a detailed presentation. A lot of useful data I see that you found out. I'm sure that's going to lead some useful work. I'm curious if any questions or any comments for Amanda here. As always, lots of comments in the chat, lots of positivity. All right, I'll take it as a no. Thank you a lot.